Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the new Infranodus AI browser extension that visualizes the content of any web page, YouTube video, or PDF document as a knowledge graph, where you can see the main concepts inside that document or that video. Use this to navigate to the parts of the content of video that you find interesting, where you can also see what are the main topics using the knowledge graph, how they relate to one another and what are the gaps between them so that you can identify some interesting parts of content that could be developed further. And all this powered by the knowledge graph and the underlying GPT-4 AI system that allows you to generate a summary of any topic in just a few seconds and where you can also generate interesting research questions that would allow you to develop the, the content further. So if you're interested to see how that works, uh, keep watching and I will demonstrate how this extension works step by step. So first of all, you will need to install it. This you can do from the Chrome Web Store or from the Firefox add-on store. And if you have Safari browser, you can send us uh, a message over Discord and we'll send you a special test flight link. And once you have this extension installed, you actually need to go to the settings and just check if everything is okay. So by default, it uses 3.5 model, but you can set four, it's gonna be a bit slower, but I'll keep it for the purposes of the demonstration. And if you're in Safari browser, you will need to also set the API key, but normally you can just use your web app login. And once you change those settings, then you click save. And also I recommend you to actually set the graph as the default panel so that each time you load something, you would be able to see the graph and then once it's all activated, when you load any page, so in this case it's a YouTube video for instance, um, you will see a little button here at the bottom right and you can also pin the extension at your browser tool, toolbar and then you can also activate it through here. So if you pin it like that, it's always going to appear at the top. But for now I'll just use this button, which you can also remove if you want. So once you have the content loaded, then you click the button it's going to analyze the content of the web page or a video and visualize it as a graph. It shows you what are the main concepts. So the way that I like to explore uh, this graph first is just to kind of turn it around to touch the content of the video a little bit, right? And then I'll see what are the main topics. So for example, memory seems to be a very central concept in the graph. If it's bigger, it means uh, it's more important. And if the concepts have the same color, it means they belong to the same topical cluster. So for example here, what I like to do usually is to find the smaller ones that uh, are not so evident maybe, like for, for instance here, electrical signal. It's a video on how memories are stored in neural networks, right? So then I'm like, okay, what's the electrical signal part? What is it about? And here I have a few options. Um, so I can either ask it to jump to the actual statement where these terms are used. So I'll, I'll turn on the sound so you can hear how that sounds. Like now I just have the Become video clear that somewhere. it doesn't really make sense to measure to and understand things about the brain. The reason is, I think, that it has a rather simple behavior. It integrates electrical signals from other neurons to determine Here its own go. activity. Here we go, electrical signals and then from it broadcasts other neurons. So you see, I jump directly to the part of the video where they're talking about uh, how electrical signals are used for storing memory. Then if I want to deselect those nodes, I can click here on this button and choose some other concepts. So for example, neurons and synapse, right? I can also zoom in and see how they look here. And then if I jump again to the statement here, so look, I jump here. With the right software, your computer can already do this. But it's not how computer memory works on its basic level. The point of this video is to convince you that auto-completing so memory, also known as associative memory, neurons is a kind synopsis. of natural behavior of net and so on. You see, so it's kind of nice, especially with long-form videos, to explore the content in this way: selecting a few nodes and then clicking jump to the statement. You also have a more precise way of doing that. So, for example, if I select a new word, like here, I have pattern and matrix, for instance, and I just want to see them in context. I can also click here. And then it will open this explore part of the extension where it shows me the statements which contain those terms, right? So there I can see pattern, context. And then if I click on the statement, I'm also going to jump to the part of the video or of the content which is talking about this. And if I like what I see, so for example, if that statement sounds interesting to me and I want to save it for further research, I can actually click 
either on this button to copy it into my clipboard and paste it into my favorite note-taking app, or here I can export it directly to InfraNodus. And each time it's going to import to a specific graph that relates to where you're importing it from. So in, the, in, in, in this case, I'm exporting it from the YouTube video with this ID, so it's just gonna save it uh, into this context. Okay, and then I go back and I can select a new one and it's going to save it into the same context again. And so in the end, when I have the graph, then I will also have a visualization of the content that I exported. In fact, I have something interesting here. I think I exported quite a few stuff from my website that's called 8OS, which is on physical practice. It was just like a few AI generated ideas and notes. So just to show you what's possible after you export all these details. In fact, you can also use InfraNodus extension on InfraNodus itself, right? So if you're already using InfraNodus and let's say you explore the content using the normal functions that we have here, you actually can also activate the extension right on the website itself so you can have a different perspective into this content using this new interface. And that would be also interesting to us to see how well it actually works for you. Um, if you tell us how it compares with the analysis that you get uh, through the normal interface and how that is better or worse. So if you have any feedback on that, please let me know. But going back to the video and the functionality of the extension. So once we are done with exploring the content around certain topics, which are selected here, I can deselect them and do the next thing of identifying the main topics. So these uh, things that we explored before were the concepts or ideas. Now I want to see what are the main topics in here. And there in the extension, I actually conveniently have a list of them. So for example, here I have neural network the whole cluster on neural networks, then memory recall, and binary addressing. And the good thing is that, let's say, if I'm interested in this topic, so I want to know what is it about binary addressing, that sounds weird. So I click here, I jump directly to the part where they're talking about binary addressing. And I'm glossing over tons of technical right? detail here. So Every piece of data in RAM is matched to... So a binary I can actually address. navigate through video in this way. And, and this binary want, address, computer times, memory is measured in bits, binary switches, of, and I'm glossing over tons of, and can only be measured as. So However much memory the brain has, you can has, actually navigate the content in a nonlinear way, just looking at the topic that you're interested in. So that's also pretty amazing. One other thing that you can do uh, with these topics is to actually delete some of them. So for example, if I find a topic like here, video demonstration, that I don't think is interesting for the content of this conversation. I can just click this close button and it's gonna temporarily hide all the words that belong to this topic. They're all visible here. So then I will see what else exists in this document and how the topics change if that original topic was not there. What also can be useful is if you select some words that take too much attention, like for instance, in this case, memory, and you also hide it from the graph, and then it recalculates uh, without the memory and without this original topic, right, that we removed. So then we still have neural network, binary memory, human brain, and if we selected something, it's gonna have this little check mark, so you can see that you selected it already, right? Uh, but then we don't have any more this topic that we didn't want to explore. So this is how you would select these topics. And if at some point you wanted to select something, then you just click here and you reset the graph view. Another thing that you can do with topics that I really like, so there I'm gonna return all the documents, all the concepts back into this document, back into the graph. So now I have everything again. Now I have another thing that I can do with topics. If I'm interested just in the topic of memory, I can click here and then click on that I button here and then it's just gonna visualize that very topic. So it's gonna remove all the other topics and just show me only the topic on memory. So what are uh, the concepts that are related to memory? What are they all about? And I will also remove the word memory because it takes too much attention. And now I'm just seeing, okay, there's something about imagination uh, particles, influence, associative ideas, and so on. So it's quite interesting because you get to much deeper and nuanced ideas if you remove uh, the top layer of stuff that are maybe not relevant to you or 
that are too predictable in the content. So this ability to interactively use the graph to explore the parts of the content that might be relevant to you is very interesting. And uh, there I'm just going to increase the screen. So this button you can use to increase the size and then pinch in to zoom in, pinch out to zoom out. You can use these buttons here also, right? But let's say here I'm on the topic of memory and I want to see what are they talking about when they talk about particles and multiple actions. So, oops. Uh, multiple here yeah so I jump to the statement and here they're saying that the it's almost like the neurons behave like charged particles maybe one last question okay interesting so he's saying that the neurons behave like charged particles so that's great now that I explored uh, this part of the content I can also summarize it so instead of watching um, where it appears in the context of the document I can also summarize it and then it's going to select the statements that relate to this using the built-in RAG system and then send them to GPT-4 to generate uh, a summary of that. So I don't have to watch the video. I can also just generate the main idea, right? So the neurons mimic charged particles and behavior, storing multiple patterns and network involves calculating outer products for, for all desired memory patterns, resulting in a concept-related metric. So that's quite interesting. There I can, again, save this into Infernodus. Uh, into my special folder that will appear here uh, where I'm talking about um, all these ideas and that allows me to explore them further after. If I, let's say, don't just want the answers but I also want the questions, I can also generate the content here if I click on question and then it's going to use the same sort of content constellation to generate interesting research questions. So, how does the behavior of neurons as charged particles influence the network's ability to store and retrieve multiple memory patterns simultaneously? That's quite nice. It's like it's helping me to uh, know where or how do I need to think in order to learn this information in a more effective way. And if I click develop, it's going to provide an answer to this question. So, then it's going to be like action is a principle underlying motion and change can drive nonlinear systems toward complexity or chaos by affecting how particles interact and evolve over time, leading to emergent behavior. Then if I want, I can regenerate uh, more answers and then it's going to come up with some other response that might also be uh, relevant to my research. So once I generated a few concepts this way, I like to get all the words back into the graph. So here I'm just going to return everything to the original shape. and I will go into gaps and inside the gaps it shows me which clusters uh, are not well connected and here you can really easily see this in the graph that you have one cluster on neural networks another one on computer hardware so there is a gap between these two topics and if we generate some content or ideas that would bridge uh, this gap then probably we would come up with something new in relation to this particular discourse and the way that I like to do that is to first see uh, what are the actual content parts which are related to each topic so there I click on jump and here I'm seeing one on neural networks and then another one on computer hardware so I have these two topics you see it's jumping to the parts of the video there you will see it better like now it's at uh, zero zero and then it's at uh, if I reload the gap and show you another one for instance it's at 536 and then another one is at uh, 224 so if I listen to those two statements it's going to give me an idea of uh, how those two clusters are possibly connected or what they're talking about right and then that will allow me also to generate an idea myself that would connect those two topics the binary address and neural network but I could also click this button question and then it's going to generate a question how Infernodus usually does based on that gap and uh, try to get a response to it so that's also how you could use the gaps and all these ideas here you generate a question here you generate an answer and here you generate a summary and if you click here you view this gap in the context so then it's going to shift to the brainstorm tab and show you the two statements that are most relevant for this gap and then you can think of the connection yourself. So this is just to show you that you don't always have to use the AI to generate ideas for you. You use the graph and the underlying structure and then if you like you can think for yourself or you can also use the graph to generate ideas. Another really interesting feature of this extension is that once, let's say, 
I select something I like, like for instance, pattern and uh, metrics, right? So that's kind of like a little bit esoteric for me. I don't know what it's talking about, although I have some uh, hints already from the previous exploration. If I select metrics and pattern and then I click here, I'm gonna copy the underlying graph structure into the chat and then I'm gonna force it to come up with uh, some content that would relate to all of them and link those ideas together. So that can also be a pretty interesting way to explore the content around a certain query but using this familiar chat interface. And here for instance again I can go pattern matrix, pattern and matrix here, I go here I can also just select those two words, right? And then if I go click, it's gonna be forced to extract something from this content, which will relate to this concept and help me jump to the part that could be relevant to this. And here it provides also the references. So what are the time codes from which it actually um, found this information. So this is how you would also interact with the things that you select on the graph or copy and paste if you click here the parts of the graph that seem relevant to you and maybe use them also in, in your own chat GPT interactions. This button opens the AI panel so this you also can open with these buttons here or with this one at the top left and one other amazing feature that I kept <laughs> for the end but maybe I should have shown it at the beginning for example, let's see if we select memory, pattern, and maybe something like binary. Okay, so we make it very specific. Now, if you click here, it's gonna perform a search on YouTube for the stuff that you just selected, and it's gonna show you the different videos on this topic, and you can actually use the Infranodus extension to analyze this information. So you see what exists out there on this topic of memory binary pattern. And for example, here I see something on past and retain. And then if I jump to the video, I will see in fact which part it relates to, right? So there I click here, jump to statement, and then it selects and highlights the part uh, where it found this information. Then I click on that video. And as you can see, in many ways, content. our memories make us who we are. Help. And allows me to explore the new content. So this is pretty amazing because I can explore uh, one particular aspect of information and then if I want I can also jump to other parts of YouTube where they're talking about these topics. And by the way, the thing I showed you like about cutting off the top concepts, you can actually do it with one button here. So if you click here, cut top is just going to remove the most influential concepts and you can do that step by step to get to the more sort of like uh, interesting parts. Here, die and optical. I don't know why it's here, but here it's explaining actually how a spinning disk works. So there I jump directly to the part of this concept and laser. And then I click here and once again, I'm performing search on YouTube that shows me what exists out there on laser and die. Cut the top layer so I can see the context around it. And then I see that there is some content on foundry machines. That's quite an interesting subject to me. Click here. Sometimes it will not work because uh, it's not always easy to kind of do it technically and we're working on it. But even if you don't find uh, where to get this video, here it actually scrolls to it. So let me check the foundry machine here in the content. Extreme ultraviolet uh, lithography so let's see the good old foundry ah yeah here it actually selected it and then i click on this okay video. enough with economics let's talk engineering and once again analyze the content of this video and then get into the more technical details for example identify the gap make it show it to me by clicking this button jumping to the parts of the content where they're talking about these topics. I can even visually just get an overview and then generate an interesting uh, AI question that would link those concepts together and help me see how I can develop these ideas and this discourse further. So this is 
how the graph works. I think I showed you all the main features that you have here. If you ever want to reset it, you can always click this button at the top right. And also you can just open and close it again. And of course you still have the traditional parts of the extension. Like if you click here, then you just see the normal brainstorm and explore view where it automatically identifies the gaps without showing you the graph and generates a research question, uh, which you can also then get an answer to. So you really can do it in these different ways, like generating questions, answers, also just using the standard interface. Then if you click on the topics, uh, then you jump to the part of the content where they're just talking about this, these queries. Um, also, one feature that you might be interested in is if you click go beyond this context, it's, it's going to generate AI questions that will be going beyond the context of this video. So it will take the underlying graph structure into account, but it will generate something that might be actually quite specific uh, or general and uh, going outside of the context of the particular of, of the content that, that you're analyzing. So that's how you would do this, um, you use this brainstorm feature. And then in, in the Explorer feature, you have uh, also all the main topics shown. So if you don't filter anything, you actually see all the main topics. And if you click on one of the topics, then you see the statements inside that topic. And uh, if you unclick show top statement only, then you should see multiple statements. And then of course you can do several different things. Like you can say, okay, so what about pattern exposure? You select this topic and then summarize selected will generate a summary just of the content from that topic. So that also allows you to target the AI onto the parts that uh, seem to be a little bit more relevant to you, right? So here we're getting an answer for a highly specific idea of patterning that is used by TSMC when they produce chips. And of course you can also generate a general summary of the video if you just click summarize. Then it's going to take all the topics if nothing is selected and then it's going to summarize uh, the model. It's going to take a little bit longer but there you will have a nice and short summary of the video. And you can also click on key moments and then it's going to generate time stamped moments for the video that will allow you to also jump to the parts of the video that seem relevant to you and you can even like if you're a creator you also can use this function to actually uh, generate timestamps for your video with the most important parts of the content and by the way this is based on the topical structure so it's usually really precise and I really recommend you to use it. Uh, then of course you have chat that enables you to chat with uh, any content so in that case it's a video but it could be anything else and then you have the editor here uh, if, if you click here then you can edit the content and you can also add your own content if you want to add it to the analysis then you click here but in fact let's say that you want to forget about this video and you just want to actually create something new so how can neural networks be integrated in chips and produced as uh, devices or something like that, right? So I'll click here and then it's just this content which is analyzed. So you can actually use this box to analyze any content you want. If you ever find yourself on a web page where uh, maybe you just want some part of the content only or you just want to select something specific, you always can do that. You know, you can select a part uh, of, the, of, the, of the content that you want to analyze. Um, here I think I have, a, yeah, it's quite a lot of stuff on, uh, on software development, but for example, if I have this part here, if I click the extension now, it's just going to analyze the whole chat GPT conversation I'm having. But I can also say that I just want my own content, so I add my own part of the content, and then it's just going to analyze whatever it is that I added into the system. Okay, so it's kind of nice because it allows you to uh, choose actually what's going to be analyzed. And here you have a switch between viewing uh, top concepts or all the different concepts. So you can switch bit between this if you want to see more or less.
uh, this button always exports everything like the content that you're analyzing now to Infranodus. So if you click this, it's just going to export everything you're analyzing into Infranodus. And white screen, I already showed settings, that's it. If you ever want to move this button around, you can just drag and drop it. If you click remove, uh, next time you load the website, it's not going to be shown. So if you need to get it back, you will have to click back the top pop-up button or reinstall the extension. And by the way, also I forgot to mention that you can also move the extension yourself. So if you would like it to be somewhere else, you, then you can move it elsewhere and it's just going to appear there next time that you load the graph. So this is how it works. I hope that you find it interesting. I decided to record this video step by step so you know all the functionalities of the extension. Let me know what you think about it and if you find it useful and uh, also subscribe to this channel so you can get uh, new content recommended and if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.